Welcome to another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on a 30-year-old from Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Canada. His hockey journey has taken him to Canada, the USA, Australia, and England. A staple with the Notre Dame Hounds and Argos and laced up for Team Canada Atlantic in under-17s. A 14th overall selection and legend of Acadie Bathurst Titans. He is a three-time Canadian champion with the University of New Brunswick. Ran amok of Australia with the Adelaide Adrenaline and Falcons, putting up 92 points in 37 games played. Mucked around with the Jacksonville Icemen before finding a home and becoming a legend with the Manchester Storm. I'm guessing he's a bit of a leader as he's captain. The Lewiston Maniacs, Halifax Mooseheads, University of New Brunswick, and now the Storm of Manchester. Welcome to the shed, Cameron Critchlow. Low. Thanks, brother. I appreciate the intro. Critchlow, right? Yeah, that'll work just fine. <laughs> how are you? I get into how we know each other. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice meeting you. I know we've been chatting here for the last about two weeks or so, so... uh I'm yeah. glad we could arrange a meeting and uh, have me on the pod. Oh, yeah. This is fun stuff. Um, so I get into how we know each other. And um, your name came up when I asked Matt Ginn how he named his captains and assistants. <laughs> he said he just knew. So I yeah, guess Ginner you've done it I, before. I mean, uh, yeah, Ginner and I, I mean, Ginner uh, was his first year here in Manchester as a head coach. Uh, him and I are obviously like really good buddies. And, um, you know, I was – Looking forward to seeing him get into his coaching career, and I'm just glad that I'm, uh, you know, in a, an important position for him and our team, and uh, we can kind of work together and, and get going here. It's really cool when, like, I love that part of the EIHL when I played for Lordo was that he was, like, my buddy, but he was the coach. I had never had that before, you know? I always had the coach-player relationship where, like, I didn't really talk to them unless they asked for a meeting, you know? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been cool. Like, honestly, I mean – uh, him and I have been good friends for a few years now, and, and you know he's obviously was a, was a great goaltender himself. But you know, until, you, you until Finner broke him, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Maybe maybe played him a bit too much. Who knows? But uh, no, exactly. And and you know he's been he's been it's been weird. You know a little bit. You're not sure how things will go with that relationship, but it's been it's been great so far. And uh, you know, Ginner's a guy. I can't say enough good things about him. So, well, he seems like the type of coach everybody's going to want to win for. And I think that's the biggest battle as a coach. If you got guys that want to win for you, they'll probably do it more than they would normally, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, So, another way we know each other is I had on one of your new players, Anthony DeLuca, when he first flew into town. He was living with Ginner. Is he still? <laughs> No, he's uh, he's moving into the team living now. So uh, oh, he finally he's got a little more space wings, away eh? from Ginner. <laughs> yeah, God. I don't know who I don't know who needed the space more, him or Ginner. So well, it'd be exhausting living with your coach, you know, trying to eat right all the time. <laughs> 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 um, okay, another guy from your team I had on. This was really early on, Zach Sullivan. Yeah, another one, Sully. I mean, uh, that guy's been there a long the time IHL now, now, eh? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. It might be like eight years now. I think he's been here, but again, another guy I've been lucky enough uh, to play with for like the last five years, basically. So Sully's a he's a great fella, and uh, no, he's another good guy, good podcast guy to have on here. And then I guess the big boss there in the Storm Shelter also is a shed guy, Finner, eh? Yeah, Finner. Uh, I think all everyone who knows Finner, what uh, what kind of guy he is, he's an awesome fella. He initially was the one who brought me over to England in the first place. So, uh, you know, he's a great guy. I uh, was lucky enough to play for him for, for three years, and then now he's the GM. And he's a good guy to have a good relationship with, and uh, he's an honest guy for sure. And he respects hardworking guys, so I think we've been able to get along pretty well. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, he, he seems like the type of coach that if you work hard and you're honest and you're a good dude, then everything's going to be just fine, right? <laughs> absolutely um who's the guy in your team that fought big lou twice from cardiff chase ruddy what's he thinking uh team yeah, guy eh? i think yeah i know i think that uh i think he wanted to see it was a bit of a measuring stick for him i think we all know what lou brings he's a well good for him though i'm really guy. proud of your team yeah. that brings teams together when a guy's doing stuff like that i guess right he didn't yeah get i think hurt. I th 
No, I think he'd be the first guy to tell you he was probably out of his weight class, but he's a tough kid and he's a good guy. And, you know, he's, he's had a couple other really good fights in the league too. I think he, you know, he's fought Gagnon as well. So I, he's getting in there with all the big boys. He had a really good fight against McNally there a few weeks ago. And how old he's is this kid? The other good ones. He's a 97, I think. So whatever that would make him, I don't know, younger than me by a few years. Yeah. I have lost track of that too. Uh, wow, 97s. Yeah, that doesn't make me feel old at all. <laughs> Shit. Okay, another way we know each other, though, is when you did win with the University of New Brunswick. The first two years, Chris Colligan was on your team. My former line yes, mate sir. and babysitter in Cardiff. <laughs> and no, Cully's a man. He, I, I, yeah, I live with him in university as well, so I know I know Cully really well, and uh just got my roommate here, Tyson Fawcett, coming in. If you know, he'd Hi, be Tyson. Good interview for you. Here. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. just in the shed. If you want to come some other time, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he would. He'd be a great guy to sit down and have an interview with. But yeah, Cully. Um, yeah, I live with him in university. Hell of a hockey player. Hell of a guy. Just a good Cape Breton kid. And uh, you know, I, he was coaching in the queue with Cape Breton as well. I think he's kind of moved away from that a little, a little bit. But yeah, another great guy and hell of a player. Yeah. He's toying with me though, emotionally, you know, I want him in the shed. I've asked him to come to the shed. He says he's renovating a house. The house looks renovated now. Really nice job, Chris. Time to come to the shed. Now he's just yeah, playing think, hard to get and toying with me, toying with my I think emotions. If anyone, anyone who knows Cully would probably take him, but it'd be a 10 year project. He'd probably be taking his time with it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually he's done a bang up job though. Um, looks great. Um, okay, let's see here. Poster picks. You just sent one over with you, Ginner, and a couple of the other fellows. Is that when he's still a player? Or is he oh, hanging yeah, out with the guys? Been, that would have been 2019. So I think that was at the Christmas markets here in Manchester. I had I written down picture. Christmas market yeah. question mark. I know yeah. a Christmas market when I see one. <laughs> yeah, I just go for a couple quiet ones, nothing too big during the day there, I bet. Right. No, just a couple hot wines, or were you getting into the beers? I like to get the steins when we go two and a half beers. I don't know, eight quid for the beer. And you get I told, to keep I, the mugs, I so. said you're a leader, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, uh, and you had a poster pick also of fighting and it looked like you were beating up a ref, but that was a player. I think that's just the Nottingham jerseys. They can get confusing. They have both Is that a Nottingham guy? Years. That is an ugly jersey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what we said. It was tough to, during the game. It was like it actually like they looked like officials out there. So they, it looked like you were know. beating up a ref, and I was like, "This is a that's weird. That's Nottingham. Yeah. That would be a pipe dream to have that opportunity." Who are you, who are you fighting there? Do you know his name? Uh, he plays for Coventry now. It's um, Brady Norris. Hmm. What 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 it's caused it? Why, what what caused it's that kerfuffle? Guy. I don't know. I was probably the, uh, probably the antagonist somehow. I, was, I don't know. I think we were down in the game and just trying to get something going. So you know how that can go. I do. Um, so do you chuck knuckles every once in a while then? Yeah, uh, it was in the East Coast. So you could seem to be able to find the certain fights more. I find with the EIHL now, like you have your heavyweights and then, and then the there's a few guys, guys in hockey. between. Yeah. yeah, it's different. You know, like it's a tough league, like no question, but. It's different now. Like I think in the East Coast League, there's you know there's more opportunities because guys are trying to get different opportunities and whatnot. And especially in this league too, you definitely don't want to get hurt over here just because the the way the rosters move and and stuff like that. So it's tough if you get hurt and you know you can't necessarily find some sign another guy right away or find someone to bring in. So you know you got to be careful sometimes. Yeah, you don't want to get hurt and then. They bring in other dudes and, you know, they can be yeah, taller and good looking. But it did the research team said you, you're five, nine. Are you five, nine and you're fighting? Uh, Yeah, I think man, I think that would have been on elite prospects when I came into major junior. I'd, I'd like to say I'm at least five, nine and a half now. So yeah, I always <laughs> told people I was five, nine. I wasn't. <laughs> um, OK, let's see here. Poster pick again. Your celly with your tongue out. That was a passionate celebration. I liked it. Yeah, I think uh, you know, when you get to the storm shelter, it's a, it's a pretty loud building. It was you think that was fans actually going your, to a eh? I think that was a but against your boys in Cardiff, possibly, but who knows? Uh <laughs> no, it's good. I think um you know, you uh, the storm shelter can get rocking, they're great fans. It seems like you know every one of them personally somehow. So yeah, no, I think uh anytime I, we can score in your home building, you gotta get excited. 
I have been a fan in the storm shelter before. I don't know if you've heard the story, but I was injured at the end of the season and I took the fan bus up and had a couple steins maybe on the way. And then um, proceeded to um, hide in the bathroom of the away locker room. One of the rooms there where they locked it up during warmups. I hid in the shitter for like, geez, it was a long time naked dressed as a Viking covered in dirt from Dees. I had an ax, a sword and a shield. And um, then during warmups, they broke the glass and I sat on that shitter. I had brought in one pint. I drank it before warm up was even like before the glass broke. I then sat there. God, it had to have been over an hour. The boys came off from warm up. They sat in a room. I listened to them all talk sitting on the shitter naked. And then the, um, they went back out for warm up when the glass was fixed. And I like, man, I was not comfortable in that bathroom, but um, then, you know, that's my memory of the Manchester arena. And the other t- thing was when I got there and I'm trying to dress like a Viking, I didn't have a helmet and the guy helping park the bus was wearing a Viking hat and he let me borrow it for my pregame speech. So if that guy's still parking buses, thank you, sir. You made my night. You know, he said, hockey family, just give it back when you're done. I don't know if he realized I was going to be, that was going to be the only thing I was wearing, but you know. I've, uh, I've had a few, maybe a few player lineups introduced like that as well. Some Something similar, maybe not quite to those lengths, but yeah. Well, we used to get pretty carried away, but that was really the only way I was still involved, you know, and the power play coach. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but you got to stay involved, you know, any way you can. So I have been to Manchester and the fans there are fantastic. That guy giving me that hat to, that night and saying, hockey family, just give it back when you're done. That That is the hockey family. And that's like the EIHL fans, right? They all get, they all yeah. hate each other, but they actually love each other, you know? Yeah, they do. They're all one and the same. I think like the league itself is fantastic fans anywhere you go. I think as long as you just stay off Twitter, then you'll, you'll have that same impression afterwards. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> they well, there are a bunch that love to uh, chirp other teams, but as well love to chirp their own teams, right? So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. way to go, guys! Keep up the positive thoughts. <laughs> um, okay, so Manchester does have a good Christmas market, then, eh? They have some of the best. I will say that. Like, there's yeah, but you there's usually Germany like the yet, one. Man. That's true. I mean, I'll say this for for the UK at least. I'd say mm-hmm. it's some of the best. But uh, like I know, um, there's usually a huge like the huge two story one that's set up with a lot of smaller venues spread throughout the city. So I don't think you can walk half a kilometer without stumbling upon one, which can be an issue at times. But you know, you so just what have you that. been uh, eating when you go to events like that? Uh, I like to get a you know get a bratwurst and you maybe or something like mm-hmm. that. Whatever depends what tickles your fancy. I always. I always find, you know, you're, I think one year we got into the crepes. Like you just see people eating different things. And I know. Like, you gotta go try the, try this and that. And you just. People can inspire you, right? The food. smells and That's the sights. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to get out there. Get involved. Yep. <laughs> I agree. Um, and another poster pick, which I've seen the same picture come through for multiple posters now. Steven Dixon, now yourself. The uh, old course in Scotland there, eh? on the bridge. Everybody goes to the bridge for the photo. Yeah, I think I got uh, I got a lot of photos from St. Andrews. Uh, Tyson and Fawcett when I, and I went up there last year after the season. As the first time I played the old course, but I played the Jubilee course there as well. I'm, I'm a big golfer. Are you uh, good? Work, yeah, I like to play quite a bit. I, I was, I've worked at a course in the past at home. So, uh, yeah. No, you a pro shop guy golf. or grounds crew guy? I've done both. I've done both. So yeah, I've I've done it all at a golf course. You name it, I've done it. <laughs> I was a grounds crew guy. Yeah. A lot of hockey guys do that, and it makes sense. You get free golf. But I found by the time I was done working there all day, I didn't want to golf anymore. I wanted to leave. Yeah, it depends. Let's probably try and get you know three or four shifts a week. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, just part time gig. That's better. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think that we'll move on from poster picks. Because I'm interested in growing up in Summerside, PEI. Yeah. Summerside. How big of a town's that? It's not very big. I don't think the whole province of Prince Edward Island is very big. Uh, Would you know who Mark know Flood is? Uh, I know Flutter. Yeah, we've uh, we've done you know Andrews hockey camps together. My my father was RCMP, so we've moved around quite a bit. I think we were we moved away from Summerside when I was about six or seven. So. I've lived in every every maritime province and Cape Breton and everything, so I've I'm uh, 
True Blue right? Maritime, where you can say, yeah. <laughs> well, um, since I started the shed, it was really Cully and Haddad were like two of the first guys I really got to know from out that way. And I realize I have a real shine for Maritimers. You know that? Yeah, they're pretty easygoing guys. I think uh, you know, I try to be too. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them don't turn down a pint if there's an opportunity. I'll say that. I usually don't either. <laughs> So yeah, Flutter, uh, he's a shed guy. He we played together like when I first started my first couple games of pro, he was in Syracuse with me and he had one hell of a career. There's probably not many uh what do you call a PEIer that have played in the Island, show? Islander. Islander. Huh. Yeah, we got yeah, there's you know, um there's a few. Some of the most distinguished would be like Brad Richards. Uh, right. There's a lot of good players that come from the island, a lot of good good hockey players come from the Maritimes, as I'm sure you know, but uh it was so like back, you know, before they got a major junior team, because they didn't have a major junior team in their province, they could go to any league and play. Like that was just the rule. So they, a lot of guys went to the O and the Dub and went all over the place, really. So it's pretty interesting now. And even a lot of guys from Newfoundland were doing the same too. So it was, it was pretty interesting to see. And now uh, Newfoundland has a, had a team come and go, and PEI still has Charlottetown Islanders. So is the new uh, is know, the Newfoundland Growlers not a thing anymore? There they are now, but that's in the East Coast League. Uh, they had the uh, Fog Devils in the QMJHL when I played. So the Fog Devils. Hmm, it's probably foggy out there, then, eh? Yeah, it rolls in quite well. <laughs> Putting things together in the shed. Um, so you moved around the Maritimes, then. How do you get to the Notre Dame Hounds? Because you're not the first shed guy to go there. Is that not in Saskatchewan? Yeah, Wilcox, Saskatchewan. Uh, I was 13 when I left to play my second year Bantam there and played my You're first 13 year. 13 years well. old, you move away from home, like move away from your <laughs> yeah. parents? 13. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we were my first year Bantam I was playing in Fredericton, New Brunswick with the Canadians. And uh, we had like a big Bantam tournament come in, and, and Notre Dame came in for that tournament and just kind of sparked some interest for me. And then uh, the following year, they kind of changed the minor hockey program. They were like divvying up to make it's usually one AAA team, and then they were trying to go to two. And I don't know, we weren't really sure what was going to go on. And my parents just asked me, like, is that something you want to do? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And the rest was kind of history. So, so and that's going out to Saskatchewan. So you're living at like a boarding school? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's like uh, it's a pretty big Catholic school too. But there was a few other guys that I had known and that had already gone there and, and that were still currently there. So that helped. And so your day uh, yeah, is basically you gotta... school and hockey then, right? Like the, I guess that's what it is for all hockey guys. Though, yeah. Right? <laughs> so like once, yeah, well, once like the uh, teams are made, like probably, you know, late October, like your gym and class is counted as like hockey practice. So like your team practices during the school day and then you go and you have team workouts after it's like a pretty cool place. I mean, I, I think now it's, it's changed a little bit as far as the structure, but I mean, if for guys you want to grow up and play hockey and try to make the show or if as far as they want to get in hockey, it's, it's a good place to, you know, to grow up pretty quick and, and learn how to do it. Wow. You're moving away from home at 13. You're gonna have to grow up pretty quick. eh? <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. I actually overlooked what I wanted to ask you. I was, I'm dying to ask you this is, I don't know if you'd realize this or know about this, but uh, Matt Carruth, the goalie that was with the Devils last year, okay? He had had Twix thrown at him in Hungary. Then he comes to the shed. I don't know him. And I'm like, well, we could get that started in Cardiff. And then Twix would get thrown at him after wins, right? We don't celebrate losses in the shed. Losing sucks. No. But every time they'd win, they'd throw Twix at him. Then I had on my under 11 fellows from the Concord and Canucks here. And we asked for Buenos for the boys with Sam Duggan. And then... That was when the fans weren't allowed in for a couple of weeks. Well, that first game back, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of chocolate bars hitting the ice. And it was really cool here from the shed to be able to do that. Now it's gone with Mac to Denmark, which is super awesome. And I, you know, fun is fun. So I have the leader, the captain of the Manchester Storm on. I've had your coach on. He's a shed guy. The GM's a shed guy. I would like to start a little marketing ploy with the storm fans you know what would you want thrown on the ice do you have a favorite chocolate bar we can't have peanuts there's people allergic remember that now as far as a safe play i know i see a few of the boys eating some kit kats every now and again i'm not a big kit kat guy so 
Kit Kats happened Kit in Kats Sheffield. Would, yeah. We could do it in Manchester too. Sheffield didn't mm-hmm. do that with Evan Mosey. I forgot that part of the story. Sheffield well, had a big night. Not, you'd uh, have a you'd have a mm-hmm. big shoes to fill. Sheffield really did her. I don't think I really want to copy Sheffield in any way. So maybe we'll do something else. I, I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what other like there's like Snickers has peanuts, right? Uh, Mars think, bars. We tried we that with it. the Glasgow clan. And like, then they threw two Mars bars on the ice Two. that's it folks. And then look what happened with their team over the next five months. That's what happens when you yeah. only throw two chocolate bars on the ice in the shed. Right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you like Mars? Mars could work for me. I don't know. Maybe the storm fans can decide on their own, make it their own. Maybe just here. chocolate bars. Right. Don't even oh, say yeah. what kind. Let's just have at that's it. Right. Let's make just it a it storm, rain. a storm of chocolate bars. I like that. Well, there you go, Storm fans. Right? Halloween just yeah. happened. I'm sure you can steal some chocolate bars from your kids. Or do they do that in the UK? I can't remember. Uh, some do. I think it's a li- not as big, but they definitely do have Halloween. I know we had a Halloween party. So, Well, speaking of Cully, when I had, I was the only guy with kids on the team, um, him and Herb the Perv, um, his roommate, um, they set up a haunted house in their apartment for my children. And I still remember that shit because when your teammates will do that for your children, you don't forget that shit. And they set up their apartment into a haunted house and then they had they had candy for them too. So my kids got to trick or treat in the UK. So Collie is a great guy, just so everybody knows. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and he's going to come to the shed. He's not going to be such a punk anymore, right? <laughs> that's right. Okay, so folks, next time the store went in the shelter, have your chocolate bars ready, right? If they Let's lose, go. you don't throw them. Let them melt in your pocket, right? Don't That's deserve right. them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with the Notre Dame Hounds, though, a couple uh, big name guys on your team. Eh? It must have been some high-end hockey. You had Jaden Schwartz, because I remember watching him in the World Juniors was the first time I saw him play. And that's why I like watching the World Juniors. You know, you see a kid for, like, the first time, and you're like, oh, that guy's got it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, He's, he uh, it. Schwartzy, he still has it. Schwartzy was, like, so him and his brother who played – He's played in the DEL. He's played in the American League. He's played everywhere. Isn't uh, it like Ryland, and... Ryland, Raylan, Ryland? Yeah, Ryland. Yeah. So I mean, Schwartz he was on my Bantam team, and he was like, funny story. He was also like our. I played for the football team, and he was also our quarterback. And he was like, he must have been five foot seven. He couldn't even see over the O line. It was fucking hilarious. Like, <laughs> but awesome, awesome guy, awesome family, and like Better I know. Yeah, well, when I, like, I, you know, going back to the Maritimes for those small holidays didn't really make sense, like Easter, Thanksgiving. So I'd stay at the Schwartz's house in Wilcox because that's where they live. So big shout out to the Schwartz family for uh, for hosting me. Yeah. Uh, when uh, <laughs> when they kick you out of the dorms for the holidays. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so you basically live in, like, dorms there then, eh? Yeah, it was like old school dorms, pretty much. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty militant. I will say that, like, it was pretty strict. And uh, I don't know how I would do with that shit. I don't, I don't like yeah, strictness. Yeah, I know. I think, I think you're just more terrified to to make a mistake than anything. So yeah, uh, yeah. Make sure your ass is clean, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So another guy that did well out of your Bantam team, Braden McNabb. Yeah, I live with Nabber for. Uh, for one year during school, he's don't let really all these names drop on there. your toes. Okay, <laughs> move your toes. Yeah, drop these names. <laughs> it was uh, four of us in a dorm. It was myself, Brody Melnichuk, who was he played in the dub. Now he's an RCMP officer in Saskatchewan. Uh, Naber, who's obviously in the NHL, and then James Henry, who uh, I got to play against in the East Coast League for a few years. And it's funny how like and he would have. You know, I he, actually looked him up because he was the leading scorer on that team. I'm like, who's putting up more points yeah. than Jaden Schwartz? And yeah. um, he would have been out with Adirondack with the last shed guy, Blake Thompson. And now he's the head coach in Reading. So cheapers. Where shed yeah. guy Yannick T- Tifu's jersey is retired, number 10. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, the more you talk, there's it's it's all connected, folks. <laughs> uh, but you did make Team Canada Atlantic under 17, eh? That's got to be pretty awesome. That was pretty cool for sure. I know they don't really do the same format as they used to when I was there. Like now I think they just split it up into three different teams, not really based on region, but it was cool for us to, uh, you know, being from Atlanta, Canada, probably one of the smaller, smaller areas to pick the team from, but you, you kind of grow up with all those kids like 
pretty much your entire hockey life, just kind of moving along and growing up together, playing against each other, whatever. So that was always a good experience. Uh, I think it was in London. It was in London, Ontario that year. So it was that's a nice great city to have too. it in. Yeah. It was the Labatt. It was Labatt Center at the time. I don't know what the name of it is now, but awesome barn, obviously. And it was oh, really yeah. cool. And yeah, no, it was really good and obviously a great experience. Well, I, yeah, I went to the final camp for like Ontario when I was under 17 and like the players that are there, you're like, like I, yeah, it was wild for me. It was the first time I'd ever been like with the absolute best all out on the ice at the same time. Like there was Spezza, like all the guys that ended up in the show, Derek, Waugh or Roy, whatever you call it. I would like, say I would say about half the kids from that Atlantic team might not have even got an invite to the initial camp from Ontario. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I could see that. Bunch of city boys around here, you know. I don't right. mix well with all them. Um, okay, so let's see here. Fourteenth overall, though, to the QMJHL. That is high. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, in the queue like they actually have like a big draft so were you like, already five draft. nine at this time yeah i was probably about yeah probably about 20 pounds lighter but <laughs> uh yeah so i went down with a good buddy of mine he was in drummondville a uh, good buddy of mine jake allen and i went down for the draft and um like the yeah, goalie ex- yeah the goalie for the habs yeah so i think he went in the second round of that draft he's a year older than me but we went down together and it was really cool and like they do a big thing man like the Q did it really cool back in the day i don't think they do it now but you're up on stage like it was like legit it was a really cool experience um that would be i got a phone call later on that i was selected last overall <laughs> from the brampton battalion so different still, vibe still i didn't go out on stage or anything like that but i you know last overall is a thing I think there's an award for that or there's a name for it, but yeah, um, that would have been really cool though. And um, so you go there and you're there for two and a half seasons. eh? like, I find those major junior though, you get drafted as the underager and you get there that rookie year, man, you're playing against some big boys when you're like, what? 15. Yeah. yeah I was still 50 because I got a late birthday, but like, that was like, at that time there was still like the fourth line was all like heavy. So like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, so like the young like, kids yeah. can't really play on the fourth line, right? Because those well, are the heavies, yeah. and you don't want them to get killed. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, like yeah, it was it was an eye opening experience for sure, but it was fun. And uh, Sly Couturier uh, was the GM at the time, uh, great guy, and still friends with him today. I think he's the GM in Cape Breton now, actually. So, uh, so he yeah, would have been Cully's cool. employer then. I think he just got hired this year in Cape Breton. Mm-hmm. And Cully's not back. So I don't know if he would have been at the time, but. When, what You don't know what Cully's doing, do you? Is he coaching minor hockey now? Uh, I was speaking to him the other day when he heard that oh, I was coming really? on here. Yeah, but he won't yeah, come to so... the shed himself. What a punk. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had all good things to say, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm sh- I don't even want to hear what he said. Um, okay. <laughs> so when you go there, though, um, you did have like a superstar that year that had like well over a hundred points and is still in the show. eh? watch your toes, Matthew Perot. Yeah. Perry. Uh, he was like, he just got MVP of the league the year before I got there at like age 18. And like, he, you want to talk about five, nine, like he wouldn't have been five, nine. He was like, but holy fuck, could he play, man? He was so good to watch and, and smooth. He, eh? yeah, I think, yeah. Like just unbelievable. And an awesome guy too. Like, one of the one of the best guys you, you would meet around hockey, and that's you know you like to see those guys do well. So he's had a crazy career. He's played you know Montreal, Winnipeg, had some really good stops. So uh, yeah, he was good. We had some we you know, we had some really good players out here, and we actually won a few rounds in the playoffs that year too. So that was a cool experience as well. So where's a Katie Bathurst? It's in Bathurst, New Brunswick. So it's like northern New Brunswick. I think the population is like. 35,000 like tiny man like but they just lost like, the team it was it's been up and down like that's where Luongo played like when he was in junior and they had won the cup like their first year of existence I think and like since like the, the rink is probably about 3,500 so it's like a good junior barn and like they used to pack it and then when I was there like we had really good support and then it kind of dwindled a bit and then they ended up winning the mem cup like what three years ago or something like that so I mean it's been Good they day. have a good, it's a good, it's a good little market for sure. Um, yeah, it's all what you want, right? Manchester's a pretty big city. I didn't want to skip over that when we were talking about it. like 
you guys probably have a lot to do on days off, eh? Yeah, like I live like pretty much right in the city, so it's I mean I can walk out my front door and there's plenty of places to eat or go for a beer. Yeah, exactly. Go run a muck and get a buck <laughs> deep or something. But uh, no, it's good. And like uh, I've been lucky enough, like Tyson Fawcett and I have been living together basically for the past four years, and we played together in the coast before coming here. So yeah, we're pretty familiar, and you know we're we know when uh, when one of us needs to go out for a beer or bite or whatever it may be. So it's it's, uh, it's nice to have someone really familiar to live with. Yeah. So then you guys have your uh, game days pretty well lined up. Same time naps, same meals, or what? Uh, we're. I don't think we could be on opposite ends of the spectrum on game day routines. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. He uh, he he eats at different times and naps at different times than I do. So I think it is kinda, that right? We don't really first time we might see each other in game days when you get in the car to get to the rink. So <laughs> that's interesting. So what time are you eating for a seven o'clock game? Uh, probably about one thirty, and then get down for about a half hour nap. As a half as hour older, nap, like, grow up, man. You're a hockey player. Enjoy well, it. Well, here's I used to have like two hour naps, and as I've gotten older, man, I can't wake up if I sleep too long. So I can't. I gotta sleep make sure she's sure. Now. I can't make yeah. it past fifteen minutes, and I pop back up like I'm supposed to be doing something. You guys I don't know, have anything to do till game time. Have a nap. Enjoy it, man. I like to get up and then have like three or four coffees. So that's my. That's my routine. I was uh, eat as much food as I could at noon type of a guy, go into a straight food coma, sleep yeah. for as long as I darn well pleased, and then, you know, wake up, get that food out of you, and then you're, you know, a few coffees, you're ready to go. A couple of games <laughs> well, to touch. <laughs> Five years ago, that would have been the routine, but it's had to change a bit over the years. So. Half hour nap, eh? Gosh. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. What else do I got then? So you're in there, you're there for two and a half years. There is a former devil that was on your major junior team. I, I think you only played a year that drew Paris. Yeah, drew. Uh, I played one year with drew. He's big right-handed defenseman, unreal one-timer. Mm-hmm. Uh, great guy. He's from Montreal. Yeah. I only played one year with him, but, uh, I, I, I forgot that he had actually spent some time in Cardiff actually. Yeah. I never met him, but, uh, then they traded your ass eh? third middle of the third season yeah christmas time i think they were just kind of looking to go a different direction they're like hey you can stay probably won't play that much or we can trade you and i was like why would they say you're not gonna play that much i don't know i think it was just the one of the coaches kind of had 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 enough of me at that point so (laughs) isn't it weird but yeah there's coaches that didn't like me too and then you know there's I don't know. I don't get some people out there, but for my research of you, you'd be playing lots for me. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Um, so you get traded. You go to the Lewiston Maniacs. So I'm guessing that's in Maine. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was actually. It's like it was the only American team in the queue. So you're crossing awesome. the border I, all the time. It, yeah, but like the best thing about it was like our closest trip was like five hours. So we'd just go like. We never traveled a day a game ever. It was awesome. Like you got this, we'd go to Montreal and we'd stay for like a week and we'd just like go to different spots near Montreal and play. So it was actually pretty cool, but uh, it was, it was a great spot. For the young men to do in Montreal probably too, eh? (laughs) Oh yeah. Like I, but like it was, it was cool because like I got there and I got my like, I don't know, junior, you're getting paid. Like you're 18, you're getting like what, 200 bucks every two weeks. And like, you get there and they're like, you're like the cash was in an envelope. So you're like, Oh, you're like, Oh, no direct deposit. And like, Oh yeah. Slipped a bit extra in there for you. you guys won this week. That's pretty good. So I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> oh, that's good. When they do that, you know, uh, um, it was nice. If you deserve it, right. Celebrating wins. That's right. <laughs> um, so were you close to the university of Maine? I played there. They had a, I thought it was the wildest arena. I had like to, to date at that yeah. point in my life, when I went to Maine my freshman year, that was the craziest arena I had played until up till then. Yeah, like Orno, I think it was about two and a half away. But like I had been to a few games there to watch the Black Bears play. And then even when I was playing University of New Brunswick, we had gone to play the Black Bears a few times as well. So, yeah, you because you were Western Michigan, correct? That is correct. Yeah. yeah. Derek, yeah, we, Derek Derek Roll told me that. So Railer. Yeah. Shed yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
So I guess when I posted that you're coming on, a few fellas you do or that have been on have reached out, eh? And said you're coming. There's been I've had <laughs> I've had some good chats, and they said that I'd enjoy it. So yeah, I was looking forward to it. <laughs> That's good. I like when people say they're going to enjoy it. I own I've never really had anybody say they didn't have fun and that they wouldn't come back. I'm pretty sure I have repeat customers with all shed guys. You know. There you go. Yeah, pretty exciting. Um, but. The Lewiston Maniacs was the first time you're named a captain that you seem to be doing yeah. all the time now. So when you, the first time you became a captain, did you feel like you had to do more and do different things or did you know you could just be yourself? Um, I think like, no, not really. I think it was just kind of, it's pretty natural for me, but I say this on like every team that I've been put in that position. Like every time you have, you're the captain and you have good leaders around you, like assistants, not even guys who wear letters, but just guys that you can expect to do the right thing a lot. Like it helps so much. And I yeah. think like from a captain standpoint, I think having like having your assistants and guys that you know that they can do the right thing and keep each other accountable. Cause I think if it's always one guy talking it gets, gets old pretty quick and falls upon deaf ears. So I think, yeah, having good people in those positions around you, I think it's just making sure that they feel like they're, they're important too and know like how much, you need to lean on them for you to do their your job. So, you know, you know how that can help. You know, you're going to do pretty good in the real world. Did you know that? <laughs> I certainly hope so. Anyway, we'll see if I ever get there. Yeah, no, hold, just hang on <laughs> as long as you can. Um, I, You know, it's a podcast. I think I'm allowed to be proud and I am going to say what my, I just got my work review like a day ago. And I literally have done like 150 episodes this year. And I told them it would never interfere with my work. And I'm proud of this because I can do both. And I can parent and coach hockey, you know? This was my my the, the statement at the end of my review. A general all-round good guy, dependable, transparent, and one of the best team builders in the house. I think he could mentor other departments as to ideas and ways to get team spirit up and members more involved pretty much what you just said i think it's pretty relative but i think you know like guys with hockey backgrounds and guys who've especially guys who played you know into their late like later years of their career as far as hockey goes you kind of know like you're around there for a reason i think that's why and you, and you know what it. wins when winning is guys doing things right and working hard together and being a teammate right if the guy in the first line or the guy in the fourth line needs help. You help them any way you can, right? That's right. I think, but, you know, again, like just people that you care about, right? And you want to see them do well too. It's not just, not just yeah. one guy. You know, you want to see your line mates do well. You want to see, you know, power play do well. You just want to see guys have success. And, yeah, you know, like do. it's, it's a long, it can be a long fucking season sometimes, you know, how that can go. And, well, and you can be on teams where guys, they, you can tell they're in it for themselves. The game ends. They're out, they're out of the locker room. Like what you could win the game and they're out of the room within 10 to 12 minutes. And you're like, yeah, why? Like we just won. <laughs> we just waited all day to play this game. Why don't we all stay together and be a team? You know, that's right. I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, the punks that like, don't get a point, but the team win. And then they, you, they just leave and you're like, well, yeah, this is about everybody. Not you. <laughs> so, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyways, so Lewiston, was it good? You were there, what, a year and a half? Year and a half. And uh, the first year we weren't, when I got traded there at Christmas time, we weren't great. But the following year, we had a really good team. We had a young team. 15 playoff really games. Good... That's at least three rounds. Yeah, we lost in the conference final to St. John, who ended up going on to win the Mem Cup. And then, uh, like, we had a really good team, and we were kind of gearing up to make a really good run the following year. And then – They traded uh, us. Our, no, our team folded. What? That's what happened. Our team, our team folded, and oh. then so from there, that they, they had the league had a dispersal draft. So, based on last to first in the standings that year, they could draft a player, and then it would be a snake draft going back up the other way. Like one of the craziest things, like you. So ever some, see some teams were going to want to get a young guy and then some teams are yeah. going to want the guy that's ready now. So when did you go yeah. in the, in the dispersal? I don't even remember like where I, when I went, but I remember I went to Victoriaville in the draft and like, so I'm like watching this and then I go to their roster and I'm going to my 20 season and they have like 
four guys returning that were 20 and just had traded for one. And also one of those guys was a goalie. So I was like, well, fuck, I don't think this is looking too good. <laughs> yeah. So their, their, their GM called me and then um, he was like, hey, like just saw you were available still. I thought I could get a good draft pick for you. So like I'm going to try and trade you. We'll see what happens. I was like, okay, whatever. And then like kind of waited for that for a bit. I was reaching out to some universities to see if they'd want to be interested in me having to go play for them. And wasn't getting a lot of great feedback at that point from them. And then I had messaged. So our trainer who was in Lewiston with me used to work in Halifax. And I was like, Hey, like, are you still good buddies with Cam Russell? Who's the GM there at the time? He's still the GM now, I believe. And uh, he's like, yeah. And I was like, would you mind like just sending him like a note saying, you know, this is what I'm doing. Maybe throw him a, throw a phone for me, whatever. And he's like, yeah. And then uh, end up they ended up trading for me, and we had five twenties in camp, and then was able to make the team from there. And then what are they allowed for? Three, four. three, yeah. And three. then you were named captain again. Yeah, no, it was good. And then you got to play with a couple, couple yeah. good players Let, along the I way. Wanna there, drop, so. I want to drop these names. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your toes. But before I get to those names, is you do become the captain, and that's one thing I want or I have written down here is that. You're the captain, and it's your first year on the team, and Nathan McKinnon's on the team, eh? They yeah, named Nathan you captain. And, uh... You must be doing something right around the locker room. <laughs> yeah, we were also roommates, so. <laughs> oh, really? God, you know a lot yeah, of famous yeah. folks, eh? <laughs> I've just been around the block, I think. Um, You had 19 playoff points in 16 games, though. Yeah, so I was lucky enough. Like during the season, it was more of like uh, up and down the lineup, whatever. We also, so we had like, well, Drew Ryan was on that team, Marty Furk, yeah. a lot of good players. Fukali was a goaltender. And those, you just, like, those are Ryan. all the names I had written down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they were all, those three were 16 all at the same time. And they then, were like, 16 years old at that point. Yeah. So they were kind of in playoffs. They were kind of getting bullied around a little bit. And then they, I ended up playing on a line with, Drew and McKinnon during playoffs. So I just kind of went to the net a lot. <laughs> Good things happened. McK- so. McKinnon had 28 playoff points in 17 games as a 16 year old. <laughs> yeah. He was gross, man. Like, he, but, he's but like, still gross. He, he's like so competitive. Like he, he was almost too competitive, to be honest. Like you, you would be doing like a one on one in practice and a guy would stop him and he'd be like, Cross checking the guy in the face, and I'm like, Nate, you can't do that. Like, these right. guys, he's your teammate. They're gonna, <laughs> yeah. they're gonna fucking kill you, man. I promise. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, do no. that. <laughs> yeah. That FERC really takes a hard slap shot, too. Eh? Did he have one back Dude. then? Oh, crazy, man. Crazy. And he was just like, he, he, like, he plays so European. It's hilarious. Like, but yeah, he doesn't even so have talented, a vowel in his like, name, eh? F R K. Not even one vowel. <laughs> but a huge beauty and a great guy. And he's had a great career to this point too. So I know like he's, I think for it was last year, the year before he got a lot of NHL games and was doing really well. So, but he's, you know, he's one of the top guys in the American league every year for sure. So he's, he's a good player and a great guy too. Um, so how far did you guys go if you're playing like 17 playoff games? So we lost in the third round. And so we were playing Ramuski and, I was game five and we were down. It was like the end of the first period and I ended up getting into a fight. And uh, so I like come off and Ducharme was the coach at the time. And he comes and he's like, you're kicked out. And I was like, what? He's like, you took off your helmet. I was like, no, I didn't. And then, so I guess they called me like for removing the other player's helmet. And in a fight. I, and I got a plus a one game suspension for it. So we lost in game six of so my last junior game. I was suspended. <laughs> for, and you got in a fight and the guy's helmet came off. You're supposed to take his helmet off so you can punch him. Yeah. That's the Quebec league for you. <laughs> that is, that is new school hockey right there. <laughs> no kidding. This would have oh. been, this was 10 years ago. <laughs> That's crazy. In yeah. the, like in the playoffs and they're going to call that baloney. That yeah. It's, it's the ref's the fault thing. too, right? To, like it's yeah. like the refs nowadays that call wrestling fighting it, it you're the yeah. problem refs you're the problem maybe guys would drop their gloves if you guys weren't acting like such punks right <laughs> anywho um okay so after that then your last game ends like that so what are your pro options because you had to have some after a playoffs like that 
running a muck with yeah, Ben I, and McKinnon. Well, I went to I went to Oilers camp, uh, Dev camp that summer, and then an uh, unfortunate thing called the lockout happened. So. Oh God, those things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I, so I know the lockout happened. And, yeah, and I ended up going to school instead. But uh, I really liked playing at school. It was great. Um, after I got <clears throat> fifty points in college, um, it was a lockout. <laughs> Shoot. <Yeah>. So <laughs> Shoot. We, we have something in common then, I guess. Yeah. Well, um, okay. So then uh that's how you decided to go to the university then is that it's a lockout. Yeah, I almost went to I almost went to Austria, but then really? I just kind of decided like where I in Austria. Sure. I don't even remember. It was uh fuck, where was it? It was Dorn, like a coastal Dorn team too. It looked, it looked, it looked awesome. But at the time, like my parents were like, well, you know, I think you should probably go to school, like just as far as a, as far as a real life decision, but it was in my home. Like my parents were living in Fredericton at the time and I hadn't been home for a while, obviously. So it was nice to be able to go home and uh, played a really good program at UNB and played with like a lot of really good players, but even better guys. And so that's in Fredericton. That was one of my questions. Yeah, Fredericton, New Brunswick, and I was able to make you know meet guys and make relationships that'll be be there my whole life, and we we won a little bit along the way too, so that was a lot. A of little fun. bit, eh? You won the national championship three out of five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, my first year it was in Saskatoon, and I had gotten suspended in playoffs, so I wasn't able to play the entire national tournament. But then, obviously, we were able to go back and win a couple more, which was nice. You got suspended again? What did yeah, you do this time? Again. Uh, just a hit. I think it was a hit to the head. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're just playing playoff hockey. They just don't realize it, right? <laughs> uh, I guess maybe maybe a little bit too rambunctious. I don't know. So how does, how does Canadian University playoffs work? Because it looked like to win the championship, they were playing about seven games. Yeah, so what it would work is you play within your conference. So we were Atlantic, seven teams. We that year we finished first, so we got a first round bye. But the first round is a three game series, and then the second the second round is a five game series. And then because there was more than one team going to the like going to nationals from that conference, if the you won that, the group, well, yeah. So like as long as you won the semifinal, you were going to the national tournament. But because of, of that format, we played a three game series for the Atlantic Championship. To win and that too. We, we did, yeah. We won that, and then we were able to win the nationals, which was nice. Okay, and that's with Cully for two years, right? Yeah, with Cully for two years, he was our captain both years. So, so he's the captain the first two years, and then you're the captain the next three years. Yeah, yeah. So if I could convince him to the shed, I'd have the New Bruns University of New Brunswick captain in the shed for five years. Okay, just there you go. Thinking out loud. Okay. Uh, but they are a powerhouse and so that like, how do they, how, why are they so good? How do they get players? Is it like, are they giving you a little tickle of money on the side? You don't have, you know, just wink, well, if, I'm, I'm, you know, don't I say it, just any, wink. But... <laughs> yeah. Sure. Coley went yeah, for that's... free, right guys? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, but I think like the, the coach, uh, Gardner McDougal there, man, he's been there for, I don't know. He's like, he's like a legend in, you know, Canadian university hockey. And uh, I would think so. He's if he keeps ex- winning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's an incredible recruiter and like, uh, he's obviously a great coach, but he can recruit like you wouldn't believe. And, so what, did, how does know, he recruit? What did he do? how did he call you? how do he, he get just you? basically, he just basically won't leave you alone until he, he gets what he wants, you know, <laughs> but uh, he's like very, he's like the way he coaches, he's not very X's and O's, but he's very like a motivational guy. And I think he can find ways to like resonate with guys he's trying to recruit as well. You know, if you have good players, they tend to recruit good players too by themselves. So yeah, I mean, I play with guys there that you know played NHL, played KHL, DL all over the damn place. So I yeah, a couple of yeah, that Mallet or Malay or what is he French? Yeah. He's Phil in the Maia, KHL yeah. now. Like, and I was thinking, I was looking at it, I'm like. I remember when Cully came to Cardiff, he had just been the captain for two years, won the national championship, and then we signed him. And the plan was like me, him, and Haddaddy were going to be a line. Um, didn't always work out that way that year. Um, but like that, he's coming to the EIHL with Cardiff, and then you got other guys that were scoring about the same amount now in like the Swedish Elite League, the KHL, you know? 
Yeah, no. It's crazy. Sorry, Collie, you had like... to play with me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're the anchor, man. You're the anchor. Yeah, I held him back, and then he retired just a couple <laughs> years later. Sorry, bud. <laughs> I wanted to see you spread your wings, but... <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, you get there's some guys that have had some serious pro careers out of there, eh? Yeah, it's crazy. But like again, like it's weird. Like it's so funny because the way that they run like the program is, you know, like within college hockey, like the schedule's pretty much the same every year with like breaks, segments, and then playoffs in the tournament. So, like the way that the season you're having your, you know, your your pre season meetings and you're setting goals or not, and like anything less than a national championship is a, it's a massive disappointment to be honest with you. And well, that's and a good years, standard like, to have, right? Like, yeah. And like the two years, <laughs> the two years that I was there and we, and we didn't win, like it was, it was hard on you for sure. And if fuck, you knew that the training camp the following year, you're just going to get murdered. So it was, that was motivation in itself. So yeah, they'd be angry at you for not winning the national championship. Eh? Well, I just, you have to work that much harder to get there, I guess. Yeah, no. Training camps in hockey used to be totally banana lands. What was Matt Ginn's like this year? He ran a good camp. Like, he ran an honest camp. I would, like, I'd be lying to say if there weren't a few bag skates, he definitely put us on the goal line a few times. But, you know, this league, like, it's – for us, I think we had, like, eight returning guys. So, a pretty good – you know, a pretty good core. But, you know, he's trying to just get the systems for a lot. We have a lot of new first-year pros and guys new to the league. So, just trying to get them introduced and kind of crash course on systems. And because mm-hmm. uh, again, again, when we play in, in the storm shelter, it's one size sheet. And then you go to Cardiff and it's a completely different game. So you got to find a way to play two different styles pretty much. Oh yeah. I remember the year, like, so my first year we're in the rink. That's just like the storm shelter, the big blue tent. Yeah. The next year we're going to yep. switch halfway through the year. So I remember Lordo trying to plan the team. Like he wanted to have a small rink team, but then also be able to transition halfway through the year. And like when you're recruiting a team, like playing in the storm shelter, you'd have to keep that in mind, right? Like it is a different game than playing Definitely. in uh, Nottingham or Sheffield where it's way too warm and big or Belfast. You can't even run That's into right. people. There's so much ice, you know? No, you go from playing ping pong to tennis, really. Well, it's like then if a, if a line mate dumps it in, you're like, what are you doing? Look how much room there is out here. <laughs> I'm not going to get that. <laughs> then, then again, you get you get on the big sheet and you're like you're playing outside the dots the entire game. You have the yeah, you can't you get the near the net. The There's the nothing happening. Game, but you you're not doing anything, so it's different for sure. It really is. I find the big ice games are way more boring and people can argue that all you want, but smaller ice, there's way more bumping and grinding chances and just stuff happening. Right. Yeah. A lot more could happen. Definitely. Uh, like you come <laughs> in our ring. It's like, you come over the blue line. Just, there's not a bad shot. <laughs> so no. put it on net. You have a chance to score. And next time you guys win in the shelter, there's going to be chocolate flight everywhere. Right. It's going to be like a storm at the end. Right? Well, I hope there is. I Me hope too. There is. Me too. That'd be really cool that we started that right in Manchester. Right. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Um, but you guys got to win, you know, no pressure though. Um, okay. So after your five years, what did you take there? What's taken five years at university? I did business and then I did like uh, my last year, I did a major in economics that year. So I, I didn't come away completely under empty handed. <laughs> You'll do fine in the real world. Um, does Manchester have an MBA program? Yeah, I did it my first two years here. So you already have your MBA too. Yeah, that's why initially, like when I came over, that's what I, that's what I was intrigued about. Like I was in the East Coast League, and I, I loved playing in the East Coast League, and like I, you know, I thought it was great. But then I kind of knew, like I had gotten like a bad injury at some point, and I was like, "Fuck, you know, that opportunity may not be around forever." So I wanted to make sure I got over here while I was healthy, and uh, me and Finn are connected, and I was lucky enough to. And it took you know, be two able years. To get one of those. It was a two-year program, yeah. Mm, mine was only one in Cardiff. Um, two years was it hard then? Did it was hard, eh? Playing hockey and school, but I guess you don't. You didn't have like kids and stuff. So it's probably a little different. <laughs> no, it's a little. It's a little different. I probably had a little less chasing around than you did, but uh, it was okay. Like I think if it was, if I had a came with no school experience, it definitely would have been more difficult than not. But 
uh yeah like they're, i mean they were really good with me too like if you know with classes and practice and stuff they were just like just come when you're done and you know we'll get you caught up on whatever you need afterwards well wow, that's pretty awesome you did that now you can just enjoy the rest of your career and uh you'll be ready for the real world whenever it happens right that's right so after your five years then how old are you after five years of school I was 25, yeah. Getting into pro. So your pro options are the Adelaide Adrenaline and Falcons. With the Falcons, in 11 games played, you had 49 points. (laughs) How'd you end up in Australia? Okay, so I had a buddy that was playing in Perth in Australia, Jessica Bernard, and he he had done like the same thing. He was playing like, he was playing in like Belgium during the winter and then he'd go to Australia for the summer. So it's like, you're there from the months of, it would be like my, April season. to yeah. April to like August. Right. And I, I just spent five years uh, like in the same spot. And I was like, well, you know what? Like might as well just go and see what it's all about. And I was able to do it. And it was probably like one of the best decisions I can say that I have ever made in my life. Like it was so much fun and, it's really cool. So many good you did that. Yeah, like, you got that experience. It's yeah. Cool. And it was like, it was, it was awesome. And like, we had three other, we, you're allowed four imports and we had three other maritime guys. So we were like, well, oh, fuck. And we all lived together. We had a blast. It, it couldn't have been better, really. Yeah. I, it's, it's shed guys for me. It seems interesting. They seem to be maritimers, small, <laughs> small town Ontario, and then like um, out west. And um, Sask boys, I don't know. You know, seems interesting. Going back to going back to the <laughs> going back to that Falcons team. So like, we get there. I sign with the Adrenaline, and like, that's a thing. Right. So why Cole are you on McMillan, two teams? That's Logan. another question. Yeah. Well, okay. So Cole McMillan had been there for a few years. Who was Logan McMillan's brother, who had played in Manchester previously. Anyway, he's like, yeah, like if you want to come out. Like, these guys would love to have you out. Like, it's just kind of like men's league pickup. Like, it's not that crazy. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, I think, like, I think we had, like, a couple beers before we went to the rink to go play this game. And I get home, and one of the boys is on the couch. He looks at me and goes, you know, that's on your elite prospects, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> oh, it like, sure oh, is. My God. You ran oh, a muck yeah. there. Ran a muck. Oh, 92 fun. points between the two teams. <laughs> <laughs> In 37 games, folks, 92 points. Um, I'm just, I, there was an Australian rugby team came over in high school and we had a big party with them and they seemed like some rambunctious fellas. Was the hockey the similar? Was there a bunch of fighting and trying to ha- lay big body checks? It was, but like, you know, like it, it was like, cause you have your four imports and you typically like when you're playing against another team, you're playing against the imports And then you'd have like your high level, like Aussie guys or guys that there's a lot of guys that are Canadian or American that have been there long enough to get like their status as like an Aussie. Yeah. So like you have those guys and then you have like the bottom tier guys who are like just completely reckless and they have no idea what they're doing and just like flying around and like, Sometimes you're just like, would you, you gotta, watch your stick for like, <laughs> you gotta be careful like, out here, man. You got yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, so there was a bit of that for sure. But like I mean, I guess like going to Australia would be like coming to England or the UK for your first time. You're like, Oh, this is a little different over here. And then I would say like Australia was even more rough around the edges than anything. Like it was a good time though. Like they were good people, like to have fun. They treated me really well. So it was it was a great experience. Where I've had a few people that have played in the Australian league and seems they've almost all ate kangaroo. Have you ate kangaroo? Yeah. We, yeah, we you uh, sick we, fuck. That's disgusting. I know. <laughs> Barbecued it. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <clears throat> like the leg? The shank? <laughs> uh, I, I think it's like the ass. Like you eat the ass. Oh, the kangaroo's <laughs> ass. I bet you it's strong and tough to eat. <laughs> Oh, you ate a kangaroo's oh, ass. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this, when I said that we know some of the same people, I thought you had played with my line mate from Landsuit, Germany in, in Australia when the research team was hot. Alice Kratoshka. 
Um, I clicked on his name. That's his son. You played with my line mate's son from the Czech Republic <laughs> in Australia. So Alice Kratoshka that I know is his father. And he was on my line mate in land suit. And the first national team break, when you get a vacation, he let us follow him because he's going to see his family, which I'm assuming is this young man that you played with. He was driving. We follow him to Prague. He takes us right to our hotel. Fun fact for the folks, when you're driving Czech Republic, you have to have your headlights on all the time, even in the middle of the day. Makes no sense. But that guy helped us out, helped us get to Prague. And his son played with you in Australia. That's a small world. <laughs> that is a small world. And he was a beauty too. Awesome guy. Good player. Like he was playing in, I don't know, like Czech two or something. And we had another Czech guy in our team. It was like same scenario. Like he was, this guy played like Czech world juniors and stuff and then got his residency in Australia and was playing. And like, he just had known Alish from hockey. And then he's like, yeah, like he can come over and play. Like we need another import. And uh, Alish came over. Awesome guy. Good player. Like I uh, really enjoyed him. He was, he was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, and he spells his name folks, the same as the shed ales is Alish. Right. <laughs> That's right. Um, but yeah, he was a beauty at Lansuit and he was my line mate through the playoffs when we uh went to the finals and lost in overtime of the final game. But anywho. Um, okay, so after that though, we won't call that your rookie season of pro with the 92 points. You go home, you haven't really had an off season then, and you get right into it with the Jacksonville Iceman. Were they impressed yeah. by your 92 points in Australia? Uh I don't know. I had Jason Christie was my coach. So anyone who knows Jason Christie, I'm sure they have some interesting stories, but he kept calling me and called me. And I'm like, man, like it's four in the morning here. Like I'm like, it's, I can't talk. Like, I, so anyway, I don't know who the, that is, but he's calling you at four in the uh, morning. <laughs> well, it's like, I was in Australia right? in, I don't know where the fuck he was, but uh, anyway, so anyway, I went there. It was like their inaugural season it was the first year the team was there, but uh unreal city like great sports town blue collar like you have like the beach and the beach bars there. It's unbelievable place to play so that's why you time, liked like... playing in the east coast when you said that to me i was like you got problems but you're you're having a whole different experience than daytona beach ohio and we weren't we weren't in west wheeling west virginia or anything like that <laughs> no no it's a tough loop <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh jacksonville though eh? so that's like the home of the jaguars and you're living there eh? so you probably have nice apartments a nice arena it was good it was a lot of fun like i mean the arena was like it's sat it's like twelve thousand, and like the first game complete sell out like it was crazy i couldn't believe really? it like it was insane man we had a we had a really good setup and a lot of good guys to play with obviously but like Fuck, you're down you every day, like throughout the whole year. Like, you leave your apartment, there's like the complex pool. Like the boys have a case of beer down by the pool. Oh. It's just it's nonstop. It was it was sounds it like was the U Club at Western Michigan in the springtime. <laughs> That's right. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh we used to bring the bean bags to the pool, keg. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So you had a good year though. 31 points and 67 games. So you're probably killing a lot of penalties, fight the odd time, just mucking it up or what? It was a big muck for sure. Like uh, I just played third, like both years I was there, it was pretty much just kind of a staple on the third line. Just kind of went about your business, did, did your job and had a lot of fun. Garrett Hunt was on my line both years. He's a complete maniac. So oh, yeah? uh, I, could pro I could get away with a lot. I could say that I probably, I played like I was probably. When the research team when got hot, he had like a, Chinese flag beside his last day. Yeah, he he's been in uh Kunlun for the last few years mm -hmm. here. I think since uh since I've been in England, he's been over in Kunlun. So uh, I think his mom is of like Japanese descent, so he was, right. like, has a citizenship there and probably played with yeah, shed guy Greg Squires there. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so then you guys whatever you get through that year, you know. That's a way better conference though so what is it like florida and like all these other nice places to play hockey so yeah in green, uh, so florida orlando jacksonville greenville south carolina you charleston south carolina shut up oh man it was Stop great it. you go out you Shut go up. out today early 
<laughs> day before you get your per diem and you're just cruising around run it's, amok it was fun <laughs> yeah exactly yeah we went on like one trip and got to go to like south carolina i'm like how do these guys play hockey down here i wouldn't be able to focus at all <laughs> Anytime you have like any of the northern teams come like down to the they, south, they they get absolutely just... totaled. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, have you been to the Lonnie Kai then? If you're going to Florida, every team ever make I've, it? Yeah, I've uh, the piano bar, beach bar. It's been like it just it's craziness, craziness. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the year two, though, you go back there. So both years you're on East Coast deals, and uh, that team's not like the one then where you show up and there's like 50 guys that all thought they were on East Coast deals, or is it? Yeah, it was uh, It was, It was. was good. Like, we had our American League guys, but, like, uh, like Fawcett, again, was there with me. We had, like, Chris Newberry was on our team. Uh, like, we had some good players. Wacey Rabbit, we had some really good players. And, uh, you know, we, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, we went in the playoffs. I think we lost in six in the first round or something like that. But So then you're two good. years in, and then that's when you decide to go for the NBA in Manchester then. And Finner yeah, recruits exactly. you. Yeah. Does he find you or you find him? Uh, I think I had reached out to, like, I told my agent that I was looking to maybe make the switch. And then uh, I spoke, I don't even know. I think I spoke to, like, Glasgow, Guilford, and Manchester at the time. And then me and Finner just kind of hit it off, really. I was like, yeah, like, I definitely want to go play for this guy. Like, I, yeah, I it was just kind of, yeah, it was just kind of a good fit. Felt like a good fit. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. That was a COVID year, obviously. So, I mean, so does Finner and here. does Finner and Ginner, uh, do they like coach similar too? Does Ginner do it like Finner? I would say like yes and no. Like Finner, a little bit different similar, personalities, like, right? Yeah, definitely. Like a little bit different, and I think like with the team we have, I think like as a first year coach too, like we have a younger team, so you kind of have to manage expectations or personalities a little bit different too like you don't know how that goes especially oh yeah new era new age and you gotta gotta i don't know if it that part of it though is that much new era new school like i think that coaches always should have coached every player differently every coach should have been um if if you're gonna win championships if you're gonna do great your players gotta want to play for you and you can't just be a dickhead all the time I played for a bunch of dickheads and like you didn't want to win for them. You wanted to win for each other, but not them, you know? No, I know they can make it, they can make it tough. I mean, I've played for coaches too, that, you know, you, you kind of band together because you hate them so much too, I guess, but Mm -hmm. that wasn't the case with Finner. I'll say that. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But so then uh, you're doing the school, you go to Manchester. Let's see here. So that's one of the years he starts to try and break Ginner. eh? He played him. 60 games that season and the other guy only got into three matches <laughs> hey Ginner was a good goaltender what can i say yeah i actually i don't i never saw him play nice guy though um so <laughs> what did you think of your first year in the eihl when it's like about the league race and whatnot yeah i mean it's different it's kind of tough to wrap your head around i think like when you first come in about like you're like, so this is a cup game. What does that mean? Like, oh, you know, and how I does had that, no like, clue. How does that yeah. Work? yeah. Yeah. Like, I had, I had no idea. And I was like, so we only play Sheffield and Nottingham. And then we like, how does it work? I don't really understand. And then I don't know, like you kind of just, you just kind of put it aside at some point. You just treat it all the same anyway. Well, it's so. all just a hockey game, right? Once you, yeah, that's, that's right. A, you try you and just, win every and game, like, whether it's a challenge cup or a league, you're just out there giving her, right? <laughs> Yeah, and then like you like play in Sheffield, and you're like, so they get how many free power plays a game? <laughs> like, what's going on, man? Like, <laughs> have you gone up to Scotland many mean? times? They got quite the yeah. refs up there. Yeah, it's always interesting. Anyway, like I like, <laughs> I definitely have. I don't have anything bad to say. I have a lot of good relationships with a lot of the refs in the league. It's just, me too. They'll even pick really, me up from yeah. the airport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, when I went over the summer, uh, I got I got a ride from Shed guys Lee Young and Dean Smith from. Uh, Gatwick to Lee Curtis. Young, yeah, <laughs> Lee Young's my guy. I really like Lee a lot. Oh, he's a beauty. Is, he's never yeah. been chirping you then, or you guys have a great. You guys chirp each other. Uh, we have a pretty good rapport. I think we're uh, we're both we're both pretty good to each other. At least we try to be most of the time. That's good. You got to stay on his <laughs> side. Good side. That's right. Yeah. Um. 
Okay, so then that first year, let's see here. I didn't write down how you did. Did you do good? Yeah, I think like the team, I think we were like maybe seventh when the everything got shut down. Oh, is that when it, it all gets shut adjust. down? So then would you not yeah. be in the middle of your MBA then? I was, I was. So we got shut down and then we went home and then you have like the longest summer of your life waiting to see what happens. And then like we got word that, I remember getting an email from Fenner and and the and uh, like the team saying, like the we're not going to be playing this year. Like, look for other opportunities. And you're like, well, fuck. Like, I didn't want to want to go anywhere else. Yeah. So anyway, I continued my MBA. The coast got word that they were going to go ahead. So I ended up resigning back in Jacksonville, and then um, I was like doing my MBA. So I was in like and you're doing it online doing back it. in Canada. In yeah. The yeah. So like I'm waking, I'm waking up at like four in the morning to give presentations in, in England just due to the time change. It was a real weird time. Yeah. And then, yeah, so I was back in Jacksonville for a little bit. And then we had the EIHL elite series. So I, I was able to come back and play in that. I think it was and like that, that confused the shit out of me when I saw that. Cause I thought there was like no imports yeah. and it was just Brits. And then all of a sudden they're flying you in. How does that work? Finner's got yeah, new so rules I, or what? <laughs> I no, I was the, so I think I can't remember. You're allowed like eleven, maybe like eleven imports for that normally in team. a normal season. No, but it was. That, only, I thought that was just Brits though. That was for the Brits to make some money. No, cause... it was. It was. You were allowed eleven imports, I think, but it was only Manchester, Coventry, uh, Sheffield, and Nottingham playing. It was only only the teams. English teams, right? Yeah, and then Guildford like opted out. I think. Okay. Yeah, so, but that was only like, I don't know, I want to say it was like four or five weeks. But you had been in Jacksonville for 22 games though, eh? Yeah, so we started like December, like we started like after, early December, I think. So then you leave them to go play in that elite series because you always wanted to be in Manchester. Yeah, but again, with that being said, like I remember like at one point we walk into the room because like there were so many guys filtering in through Europe and like different leagues. And even the American league was only carrying like 25 guys. Like it was weird. So I remember like, I don't know. I was there with Matt Marquardt, who's an awesome guy anyway. And <laughs> we walk in one day and there's seven lines on, on the board. <laughs> That's how many lines we had in practice. In Jacksonville? We had to have two different practices. We have the first team and second team. <laughs> Yeah, well, Hendo had so, known about that in Syracuse with me in Syracuse, yeah. um, right after training camp, and then like um, they had the real team practice, and then us other fellows would go out and just get bagged. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy times, and then I was just like, "Well, it's almost like a lockout." What you guys went through though that year, where there's so many it's... jobs that are gone, there's nothing left, right? It was it was an interesting time, but then we came back for the elite series. It was a lot of fun, like. We lived in a hotel basically, and I don't he was know, hanging out like, with the yeah. boys, right? And it'd probably been it was, yeah, it was. It were, it's like hotel foods and Uber Eats uh, like every day, so it was just well. Matthew wild. Myers built a whole camper van with Jonathan Phillips during that time, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, you gotta stay busy, folks. Um, you guys had four Canadians on your team though, and you had three Norwegians. Mm -hmm. How'd you guys do in it? I think we lost to, so like the semifinal was a two game aggregate and we lost to Sheffield. Because two we game had some aggregates good players. Makes sense. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's, not... let's not talk about it. But people in the AIHL might hate the shed then, but that's stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's not soccer. We're playing hockey. Don't play that anymore, right? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you had Batchy and Haywood on your team, no shed guys. Yeah, Batchy, a uh, great fella, Haywood, too. It was it was interesting because, like, you know, you were playing against, like, all these guys the year previously, and then you snatch, like, five or six of them from other rosters. And you're like, oh, this is pretty interesting. Like, you get to see, like, you know, different stories, different guys. Like, because Woody was – I think that was his, like, post-testimonial year. Yeah. And well, Batchy he's a legend has, in Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah. And then now Batchy's having his testimonial, so he would have been – Glasgow for or uh, Cardiff for like eight years until that point. So you know, it's, oh yeah. But you know, it was good to meet new guys from the league and 
It you know, always is. You, you always feel about, like you yeah. hate them until you're on the same team. And you're like, oh, so you're not that bad yeah. a guy. <laughs> but you know, it's like the guys that you hate the most, you tend to be best friends with when they're on your team. So Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Um. So then after that, then you head home for another summer, eh? After that elite series. And then the next year is actually a normal year in Manchester. So you get to go back, right? Yeah, it was nice. It was nice to have like, just a little bit of consistency back in your life. <laughs> and like start a normal season and play. And yeah. Then, yeah. So Finner's still the coach though that year, eh? Yeah. Finner was the coach last season. Uh, Ginner was our goalie. And then I think he got shut down like officially probably in February or so. Finner finally broke him, right? Took a few yeah, years. <laughs> yeah. But he came on as an assistant. Like once he realized he was done for the season and, I think he was just kind of Finner was just kind of grooming him for this year and got to you know introduce him to the other side and well, that's pretty cool sure. with how guys get their opportunities right and it's cool that he got yeah. his opportunity that way seems like he's doing a great job I like the roster he's put together I haven't really looked exactly the wins and losses of everything but um, then you see a guy like Stephen Dixon getting an opportunity in Glasgow and just how the whole thing works is like he's a player coach now and it's 2022. I yeah. think that's neat. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's pretty good. And Dix is a great guy too. So like, I think, you know, You're he's right. at the point where he's, he's been around like he knows how to be able to handle that role and stuff. So it's good to see him get that opportunity. And I know it's been a bit of a zoo there this year. So you know, it's yeah. good to see them. Well, you know, how, bit less. and then like you think about the bad karma, you know, Two Mars bars last year when we asked them for take the Waz to Mars. Matthew Waugh came on and we asked for Mars bars. Two, folks. Storm fans, be better than that next win. Be better than that, right? You don't want bad karma That's around right. your team. <laughs> Knock on wood. Uh, shoot. Uh, so anyways, that uh, the not this year, the one before, you did have 37 points and 54 games played. That's a heck of a season in the EIHL, really. That was good. I mean, it was like, I don't know. I think I had a, bit, a pretty good start. And then our team was playing really well in the first half last year. And then kind of guy went after Ginner got hurt. It was a big loss. And then, you know, you know, that can go. Oh, yeah. So it was good. It was fun. We had a lot of good players on our team last year. I will say that. Like, I thought we underachieved pretty badly. But that's the way she goes sometimes. And, you know, you just you, you live and learn and move forward. So, so. Are you, you're only five nine, but I kind of have a feeling that you almost stand in front of the net and pop out on the goal line on the power play. Yeah, I, I've been floating around and pop up, trying to find a spot this year somewhere on the power play. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I do like, uh, especially you know, in like in our rink, we try to get a, a lot of pucks to the net. So anytime you're around the front of the net, it's probably a good place to plant yourself. I mean. Mm -hmm. um, well, that DeLuca show up and take your half wall, that punk? <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, <laughs> me, and, me and Dukes are on a line right now. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, it, it's you two and who's the other fella? Uh, right now, Steven Johnson, who's another maritime guy. Oh. He was in the East Coast League for a bit, but he's another guy who's probably about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, Just buzzing around, eh, in the storm shelter. <laughs> the three. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying anyway. <laughs> Um, and then you got a Swede that's real hot, eh? Orval. Yeah, Not he's a really good player. He's uh, he was in France last season. He's been all over Europe, but I think he, you know, he played NCAA in the states, so he's he's seen uh, a lot of a lot of different styles of play. But yeah, very very talented guy, great fella, um, good guy to have around. He's a good player. Like uh, he's he's pretty nasty on the power play. I'll say that. Yeah, where's he on? Mm -hmm. is, is he on the half wall? He the plays, uh, yeah, he's playing like his flank mm -hmm. on his strong side. So he's, he, but like he, he makes a lot of stuff happen. He's, he's a magician with the puck. I'll say that. Oh, that's good. It's a, yeah. Your team looks like, uh, then you got the guy that came out of like university of Denver. That's doing all right too. Eh? Whatever. I didn't yeah. know his name down. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan Barrow is his name. And he's, I think he's about like, he did five years at Denver because of like COVID. He was able to do that, but like, oh, okay. Really, he's like your you know big guy protects pucks well, and he has a good hockey mind too. So it's it's good to see him doing well. It's his first year playing pro, but uh, it's he's a good guy, good guy to have around. And so, how are you guys doing right now? You get about five hundred or what? Yeah, I think well, last weekend we lost the 
we will give up Glasgow got their first win against us. We were on the road and then we had a barn burner with Fife at home. We lost six five. Pretty crazy game. I really don't know how we didn't come out on top. But yeah, we're playing well and we're, I think we're trending in the right direction to be honest. So we have two big uh, Challenge Cup games this weekend. We play Sheffield at home and then Nottingham on the road. Uh, the one in Nottingham on Sunday will be a huge one for us. So yeah, well, just gotta keep. So you're playing along. Sheffield at home this weekend? Yeah, be pretty fun to win, right? And then, like I know, right before Deluca came on, he was going to play his old team, and then bit of a shed boost, two goals, right? Now That's bit right. of a shed boost, and then there's just going to be candy everywhere, right? Chocolate bars Let's everywhere. Do it. Make mm-hmm. it rain some chocolate. Yeah, shed boost <laughs> for the whole team now, folks. Right? That's right. And and what it's amazing how things can snowball. You just get a few out there the first night, folks. Then the fans will start talking and be like, "What's this all about?" Next thing you know, right? <laughs> Make some new traditions. That's right. Let's get her fired up here with the uh, new captain of the team that captains every team. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Well. I probably got to go back to the real world now. You got anything else before we shut her down? No, I just appreciate you having me on here. It's uh, it's been great, and uh, thanks, thanks for chatting. And uh, yeah, look no, forward like to hearing uh, more from you. Realistically, like the shed guys all know each other. Shed guys know shed guys, and like when Ginner's talking about you, Finner's recruiting you. I'm like, well, that sounds like the type of guy I need in my shed. And well, they're not wrong. <laughs> and this has been another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with. Gretchen Wally.